But hello there. Long time no see. I have a lot to catch you up on, so let's jump into it. Although it is the slow season, a lot of things have been happening here around the server. I see that I'm assuming GG came over and uh, finished up this path here leading over into my industrial park. We're going to be finishing this up in today's video, and we are also going to be doing a lot of catching up. See, this episode is going to be a catch-up episode. I have so many unfinished projects that I need to get done and really want to tie them all up before the end of the season. So I do apologize, this episode is going to be a little bit all over the place. But if you have been watching since the beginning of the season, then you will probably already know all of the projects that we are finishing up. I'll do my best to keep you up to date and fill you in on these projects. That way, somehow, if you did miss them, then you're all caught up and you know what's going on. So as mentioned, I do want to get caught up on that, but there is a whole plethora of other things that I want to get caught up on. I want to get caught up on the nether tunnel. I have a lot planned for the industrial district area. However, that's going to be next episode because that's going to be an entire video all by itself. And then I do also want to go around and just pick up some random chests that are left around the shopping district. Now I've kind of been doing this off of camera. However, as you can see, I have missed a few shulkers here and there. So this is all of the redstone materials that Gigi has kindly returned from me pranking her. You know she's super nice whenever I prank her and then she's like, here, you can have your stuff back to uh, potentially prank me again. Any which way, I appreciate having it back. I'll add that back into my redstone box. And I was happy to see that this tent was a huge success and it was able to get so many of the members and give them a nice little jump scare. On this other little thing that I put down in here, it used to pop up an armor stand, but as you can see, it has broken for like the 17th time, and that is due to the slime block sticking to that powdered snow, which shouldn't happen because you can't stick anything to snow, at least realistically. But in Minecraft, apparently it sticks together, so I do need to come up with a fix for that. That way, this is all working and reliable for the end of season world release. There's also this section over here where I want to build something to kind of commemorate the season. Gigi built this pretty early on inside of the season and only a few members have really gotten around to adding something into here. So I want to make sure that I add something before the season is over. That way it does not get overlooked. And the same thing goes with Renee's birdhouse over here. She has been making a tree where everybody can actually add in a little section of whatever they want to add into her birdhouse which is a really cool commemorative way to leave something for you guys to actually check out during the end of the season. Now something else beyond render distance out there is the mini game district and we're going to be working on that as well. However, that's not going to be in this episode. That's going to be in a upcoming live stream. So if you're not subscribed to the channel and you're interested in seeing that live stream or any of my other upcoming videos, be sure that you subscribe along with hitting that bell notification. That way you get notified each and every time I upload a video or go live. But what are we going to be building out there? We're going to be building a pretty large structure that's going to be responsible for keeping scores of all of the mini games inside of the mini game district. Now, at the very end of the season, we do plan on having kind of a mini game showdown where everybody gets together and plays the mini game. And we're also going to be inviting some other members off of the server from other SMPs like Pinecraft and a few other content creators to come on over and play mini games with us. So whoever is victorious and can win in each of the mini games will be wrote down forever in the history of Project Bedrock. That way it can go along with the world download. And the factory, we cannot forget about the factory. We've already put so much work into it and there's still so much work that needs to be done. We're going to be working on this today also. However, we're definitely not going to finish it because like I said, there is a ton to do, but we are going to be doing some of the tedious tasks that needs to be done. And those tasks are some of those that I have been putting off like stocking and stuff like that. For me, it's going to take eternity and be probably pretty boring, but for you, it's going to be a nice little time lapse. So we'll be able to gather a ton of material and get this thing filled up and get it to where we are able to use it. Now, one thing that is pretty cool is we just recently got the 1.20.50 update. This update comes with a toggle where we can actually enable having 1.21 features. And that allows us to have blocks such as the crafter, the new copper variants, and a bunch of the other blocks. So as you can see, we have the crafter available here. We're going to have to craft us some of these. I don't know if I'm going to get around to this in today's video. Maybe we'll have to see how we're doing on time. But I am super excited that we actually have the crafter on the Project Bedrock server and maybe might find a way to implement this into the factory. That would be cool. If you have any ideas for this, let me know. I am all ears. Along with the crafter, we have all of the copper variants inside of here as well, along with all of the other stuff that come with the 1.21 toggle. 
Now, some of the stuff is not included, like the trail ruins. Those are still being worked on, so we unfortunately do not have any access to those. However, most of the blocks that I'm interested in are currently in the game, so we're definitely going to be playing around with these in upcoming episodes. But as I was saying, I do want to at least get this stocked up for the most part. And wait, what? Are you kidding me? You have... Look, they're even upside down. You have got to be kidding me. Who did this? Are you... Did it dinner bone? No, no. They're... No, they're not all name tag. That one's obviously Jeb because it's rainbow. Um... Sub to Incarceron. Now, normally I would think that that would be Incarceron, but the way that this server works, I don't know if I can actually blame him for this. Look at all the rainbow ones. Man, no wonder why I got a lag spike whenever I flew over here. Holy shit, Bat, man. Are you kidding me? This is crazy. I hope that I don't have any down inside of the redstone. This is absolutely crazy. These are like rainbow disco sheep. Oh, it's going to take so long to kill all of these. Who does this? And why sheep? Out of all the stuff that you can fill a base with, why sheep? Holy cow. No, don't don't go back there. No, you guys stay over here. I don't want you down in the redstone if you're not already down there. Let's, uh, let's jump into spectator mode to see if they're down there. Okay, it's looking good. That's a good sign. Oh, man, could you imagine cleaning sheep out of all these rails? That would be so bad. Oh. There's a few, okay. And of course a wandering trader because they go everywhere. Um, okay, so the damage doesn't seem to be too bad. It looks like it's mainly superficial. No sheep riding mine carts. Okay, that's good. Uh that uh that's that's a lot of sheep. That's yeah, that's gonna take a minute to clean. Man, just listen to the sound of all those sheep. It's a good thing that I like pork because, uh, well, it's going to be on the menu for quite some time. Let me see. Hopefully there's not any sheep back in here. Holy cow. What in the heck was that? What? That just... <laughs> that just scared the ever-loving crap out of me. Um, what in the world... It seems that we have been sabotaged. This is actually pretty interesting because not a lot of people know that you can actually observe a tree being ticked for its growth and then stop it growing with a string above it. So I'm wondering if whoever did this was more on the redstone savvy side? Is it the same person that did the sheep? Well, first things first, they left the hole. So we're going to cover that up so we don't get creepers in here. Two, we're going to disable it. Three, I'm going to go and change my underwear because I left skid marks. And four, we have a lot of sheep to clean up. All right, I guess the best thing to kill these guys with will probably be the fire aspect sword. That way I can actually get cooked pork chops and um, probably a lot of wool. I guess let's jump into a sheep slaying time lapse and get these guys all uh, removed from my factory. Say that 10 times fast. Let's go. I never want to see another sheep again. I mean, look at all these. And keep in mind, I do have looting three on the sword, but still. I mean, what am I going to do with all of this wool and all of this pork chops? Okay, the wool, I can probably find something to do. The pork chop... It has now dawned on me that this is not pork chop, this is mud, and I've been calling it pork chop literally this entire episode. Bill, it's not a pig. Stop calling it pork. Okay, so, slight correction there. Mudden, not like they're two different animals or anything. But what am I going to do with all of this mudden? At least it's all cooked, I suppose, but still. I guess I can put together, like, a cooked mudden stand that, uh, just gives out free mudden? I don't know. I suppose I'll figure something out with it. I just killed you guys. Why do they keep coming out of this corner? Oh, it's probably filled this room here. Oh, looks like there's a few of them that I missed. I get these guys. Is there any up here? Oh, that's the price. Wait, where? Are... Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. What? They're having like a pool party down here. Okay, well, I guess we got some more work to do. Ah, 
yeah finally peace and quiet and as you can see i got quite a bit of heads from all of the sheep that i just had to massacre unfortunately mojang made it to where these don't stack anymore which is very annoying and i got almost a full double chest of cooked mud and a little bit of raw mud and from the ones that were in the water and a whole bunch of white wool which can of course be dyed to other colors so that's more useful than all of this mud and but for now, I have an idea of what I can do with all of the sheep head. And uh, I think I'm going to need an anvil first. We are heading over here to Incarceron's base. And uh, hopefully he is the one that put all the sheep inside of my factory because, well, if he didn't, well, he's about to get a whole bunch of sheep head. All right, for a little bit of payback, I came over here to Incarceron's base and uh, just sprinkled around all of these sheep heads. And they're kind of in inconspicuous places, so hopefully it'll give me a little bit of advertisement for a shameless self-promotion. It's the least that he could do after putting all those sheep inside of my base. However, I'm kind of going light on Incarceron right now because I'm not entirely sure if it really was him. But if you guys have any intel, let me know because if I find out for sure that he actually did put all those sheep inside of my base, then, well, something else might happen, if you know what I mean. But until then, he got some of his sheep back. And until then, I think I'll just fly back because I don't want that nasty portal bug to uh, make me have to restart Minecraft again. That's always fun. And I just realized that me flying back was totally pointless because my next project that I want to take care of is actually in the nether. And that has to do with finishing up a nether tunnel. Well, part of it at least. I'm not going to do anything to this one as of right now, but I do want to finish up the other one that we started on a couple streams ago. So with that being said, I got all of my material right here. Let's jump into it. Let's go. It is finally done and man does it look good i am super happy with how all of this came out and i'm thinking that i'm probably going to add a little bit more to it but as of right now i'm calling it done i might go back and actually add something inside of the center of each one of these and maybe change around some of the top there where it's not so plain but as of right now this is going to be called done i do still want to take care of the hallway back here and work on this some making it look better and then i also want to work on this end because this end down here is still pretty incomplete but i kind of want to do this whenever i'm doing the rest of the nether district which means that i will eventually find a way to wrap this around here and bring it over here to the end and then what i'm really wanting to do is maybe clear this out some more and bring the roof up some which will probably be a nightmare because i'm pretty certain that there's a lot of lava above us and then potentially wrap the walls all the way around here to make them look a lot better than just a netherrack that is the plan but that in itself is going to be a pretty large project so that's probably going to be something that will come in future episodes but for now, I'm super glad that this section is done, and that means that we can move on to the next project. So as mentioned, I have been doing quite a bit off of camera. Well, kind of off of camera. You see, these have all taken place on live streams that was recently done, and the nether tunnel that you just saw, that was on a live stream, and so was this here. Now, I'm not entirely happy with this. I'm thinking about changing out some of the blocks, but it does look pretty good. I just uh, want to kind of get up there and finally detail it to uh, make sure that I have the appropriate blocks where they should go to make it look really good but essentially what I have here is a tent where all of the members can come over here and duplicate it by themselves and I have provided not only all of the trims that I gathered up and 
I have also provided all of the materials that you need in order to duplicate these drums. The only thing that the member needs to bring in order to duplicate them is going to be the actual diamonds themselves and I'm not supplying those because of obvious reasons. Now these smithing templates were originally for sale up inside of the warden however because I'm giving all of these away or not so much giving them away but allowing them to be duplicated for free it doesn't make sense for me to sell these anymore. So what I did was mark these down to the five diamonds and then people can actually buy these cheaper than what it would take to duplicate it. However, there is still a smithing template inside of here if they choose to duplicate it, but it's going to save you two diamonds buying these, which makes a lot more sense. However, once these are gone, they're going to be gone. They're not going to be restocked. So this is definitely the better deal of the two. Now, as far as this goes, I am still up in the air. Let me know what you guys think. If I should change any of these blocks out, if you think that it looks good the way that it is, if I should add more diamond blocks to it, if I should change out certain blocks, it's kind of one of those things that looks really good from a distance, but once you get close, it starts to deteriorate the look of it and, uh, it looks a lot better from back here in my opinion now aside from all of the live streams that i have been doing i have also been putting some packs together and you probably have already noticed that if you have been paying attention to the channel as of lately because i did release them on video tutorials the first pack that i'm going to show you is going to be predominantly for content creators however anybody is welcome to download this and use it if they wish to do so the first one is actually my streaming and recording pack so if you hold any kind of pickaxe it doesn't matter what kind of pickaxe it is or what it's named you can crouch and then you can left click with it and bring up a menu now since i am actively recording i can go ahead and hit i'm recording and that's going to notify everybody on the server that i'm recording it's going to bring up a scoreboard and inside of that scoreboard you can see that a number one on the right hand side of your name is going to mean that you're recording a number two is going to mean that you're streaming on top of that is going to place a flashing indicator above your head and if this indicator is something that you don't want then you can just bring up the menu go all the way down here and turn off player icon that's going to turn off that indicator that way if you don't want it blinking inside of any of your videos or your time lapses then you can turn it off however if you do want it back on that way other players around you know that you're either recording or streaming you could turn it back on and it's going to turn that back on we do also have a streaming icon as well which as you can see now we have a orange icon blinking above our head and then whenever we get done recording we could just hit this and it's going to notify everybody that we are done recording as of right now i'm just going to turn off the player icon that way it's showing that i am recording so even though that player icon is turned off you can see that it's still notifying everybody else that i'm recording if they hit the pause screen if you are interested in checking out this pack i will leave it down inside of the comments below on a pinned comment that way you can check it out and learn all of the features that it has to offer the other one that i have been developing is the free cam for bedrock edition which is a pretty awesome add-on you can just go into chat and type period free cam that's going to put you into free cam mode and then you can fly around just like you would be able to do on Java edition. We can type period FC for free cam and then L after it for lock. That's going to lock the free cam. We can run around and use the camera just like so. And then we can go ahead and exit the free cam if we want by typing free cam X. There is a ton and I mean a ton of different things that you can do with free cam and I've put quite a bit of features into it. So go ahead and check out the video again. That's going to be inside of the pinned comments also. That way you can learn what all free cam has to offer because I've packed quite a bit into it and I do plan on adding more. And free cam is perfect for things like checking if redstone is broken. So we can just run into free cam here. And if this is too fast, then you can adjust the speed. So we'll do speed three instead of speed one. That's going to slow us down quite a bit. And then we can go up here and see if this is actually transferring items like it says that it is. I don't see any inside of here, so let's go to the other one here. And it's not transferring any items over here, which means that I probably left the priming lever on in the back here. So let's go around here and see if this lever is turned on, which is going to be for the stone. I think it's gonna be for the stone. Let me take a look. Yes, it is for the stone. See how handy that is? Absolutely amazing. Okay, so the stone, we have power going from that, telling the system that stone is actively refilling, which means it's going to be the green line here. That is not powered down, which tells me that the system is not actually requesting it. And if we follow this, that means that this is going to be powered. So that needs to be turned off. And now the system should be shut off. And look at that. The system's no longer running, and although I was the reason for this thing ultimately constantly running, it just goes to show the uses of some of the free cam. Again, there's a lot more that goes into the free cam, so go ahead and check out that video in the link below. 
Now the next thing that we need to do is jump into a grind lapse and actually fill up all of the shulker boxes. Now some of them we're not going to fill all the way up like the diamonds because I already have more diamonds that I need down below because there's already five stacks down there. And other materials that are going to be relatively hard to come by and not really in that big of a demand. So we're only going to be filling up most of these. However, we're going to be jumping into a grind lapse and getting these filled up and actually getting this factory primed and ready to use. With that being said, I'm going to grab some of these shulker boxes, all that I can carry. Unfortunately, the cobblestone one is over inside of the barn. I'm going to go and grab that one now. And since I'm already in my factory with a automated tree farm that's covered in dust and doesn't get used very often, I figured that this will be a great place to start. That way we can check off all of the spruce planks, sticks, and things like that. Anything that basically consists of wood. With that being said, let's jump into a grind lap. Let's go.
I have some good news and some bad news. The good news is, well, I have been really, really busy and I have gotten a ton of stuff done. The bad news is you might be able to hear it in my voice, but I have managed to catch a dose of the man flu. Thankfully though, it's been a little bit of time since recording this and I have started to feel a little bit better at least, however you can still very much hear it in my voice. The other bad news is, unfortunately, there is a lot of stuff that I have to catch up on. And even though I've been working on catching up to multiple things over the course of this episode, I must say that I have barely scratched the surface on the stuff that I need to catch up on. But even though I scratched the surface, I have put quite a big dent in it. As you can see, we have most of this stuff filled up with materials, and that's going to get us a really good head start on putting all of this into the factory. That way we can make this thing automated and get it crafting all of the components. Now stuff like the diamonds, I don't know if I'm going to fill this thing all the way filled up. I have a bunch of other stuff that I need to get caught up on rather than going down into the mines and mining diamonds for the rest of this season. However, a lot of the other stuff you can see that we have the vast majority of it filled up and ready to go. There is a few more things like the chest I need to top off, hay bales I need to finish up on that. Pistons, I am just about halfway through crafting all of these, which is taking multiple truckloads of resources just by this single box here. And then the rest of these are pretty much all filled up and ready, oh spider, and ready to go. Get out of here. What a nice guy, he was just contributing to our factory. This is where the string goes, wonderful. Now you might have noticed that there wasn't just a time lapse of me collecting materials, there was also time lapse of me building some stuff, and that was kind of building it that way I could get the materials. So for example, to get all of the stone and the cobblestone that I needed, I needed to go down here and finish part of what I was planning on doing down here. And that's going to lead me directly down inside of this hole. Now, as you already know, this is going to be the shop for all of the different ores and whatnot that I'm going to be selling. However, there is also going to be basalt stone and also cobblestone available to be bought here. So if we go way down inside of here, this is where our supply is going to be. And I ended up adding in some support beams for the mine down here. And I might add some more inside of here once I get the layout all done. But as you can see, we have the single trident killer here. This trident killer is responsible for killing not only one skeleton spawner, but the second skeleton spawner over here as well. They're all going to funnel into there. And then the skeletons are going to pop up out of there and make their way into that trident killer where they're going to be processed into bones. And then the XP is going to be plumbed all the way over here. And it's either going to give us XP over inside of this location, which is our stone and cobblestone generator. So we can go in here and mine however much stone and cobblestone that we need. And then our XP is going to come up through the floor and basically mend our tools. That way we never have to worry about them breaking. Now I did have the chest here for the stone and the cobblestone. However, I'm really not happy with it. So I ended up moving it and there's still kind of a lot going on. So you're kind of seeing the in-between process. Over here, we have the basalt generator, which the same story, the XP is going to come right above our head. And I made this to where I could slide that out of the way. That way the XP would just rain on our head. And we could just sit here and mine all of the basalt that we need to, which is incredibly fast. And then all of that basalt's going to either go into this chest, or if you have a shulker box down here, it's going to fill up that shulker box just like so. Now over on the right hand side we have where all of the cobblestone and stone is going to end up however it's not really working properly as you can see we have a bunch of material floating by here and that is because it is not actually lining up here and if we jump into free cam real quick you'll probably be able to see what I'm saying and as you can see whenever it goes over here to line up it's not going to line up properly and then it's just going to pass all of those hoppers instead of going into it. And I have redesigned this multiple times trying to figure out why it is doing this. And I finally got to the point to where I'm like, well, let me at least check chunk borders. And well, as you can see, if we go over here and turn our free cam around, you'll see that, well, we found our problem. I've had so many people over the years of doing content creation think that chunk borders do not matter. Well, this is your proof right here. This is what's going on with these. And the reason why this is not working is solely because there is a chunk border there and it's messing up the alignment of the chest. Now, as much as I want to get this all finished up, there is a ton of stuff that I have to do IRL and both on the game as well. 
and like i mentioned there's probably going to be a couple episodes maybe even more of a catching up process so this project is probably going to be taken care of off of camera and once i get this all sussed out and fixed you'll be able to see it on the next episode and if you're wondering why this trident killer is running even though we unloaded it well it's because this is my remote trident killer design and this is not affected by being unloaded or reloaded and it's even log proof it just does not care it's going to continue to run as long as it has a trident in it if you're interested inside of that trident killer i'll link the card for that in the top right it's a wonderful trident killer it's remote mount and also delivers xp as well now i know that i set the bar a little high and this episode has been long enough however i did not get to the excavator that i really wanted to I don't know maybe i'll throw that into the end of the episode we'll have to see but if i don't then it's definitely going to be on the next episode so i apologize for that i did set the bar a little on the high side but like i said there's just so much stuff that i have to get done and i really want to get it all done before the end of the season because well i want this stuff to be completed for you guys one of the main things that i wanted to get done in this episode was the nether tunnel and man this was quite the grind but we all got it done in the end i ended up doing this on a live stream and finishing up what i needed to on it however i might go back and add some stuff inside of the center here i did make these seven blocks wide so they have a nice single center so i might come back and add some stuff here uh, just to make it look a little bit better but for now i'm calling it done that way if it doesn't happen then well i'm not going to be too mad about it now at the very end of the hall i do want to continue the design going this direction and i eventually want to fill up this entire room here with uh, a nice wall design going all the way around it and changing out the roof for something that looks a little better than just a netherrack again that's going to be on the list of finishing up everything i have the materials i just don't have the time to do it but let me tell you there was so much stuff that i ended up finishing up that i needed to get finished up even stuff that wasn't necessarily on the time lapse and some of the stuff was to do with the gold transferring system here you see i had this to where you could send bulk material through here and then it would blow the portal out push the material out and send it down this little ice stream here that way it could be gathered up by all of the hopper minecarts down below this worked phenomenal and it still does work phenomenal because it is still very much here however it did not allow for any of the gold to be picked up through the portal that way if i wanted to afk with two accounts sending gold through and having it picked up simultaneously every time that the gold needed to go to the hopper minecarts down below i would actually have to shut off the portal and then send the gold down this ice stream in order to be picked up which works great if you're sending it all through at the same time but if you want to just afk there and have it trickle through then it wasn't so great now we have some hopper minecarts underneath there that's going to feed into here so whenever it trickles through that portal it's going to be pulled through there and then fill up all of our gold supply right down here so now whether or not we want to send 20 stacks through at once or if we just wanted to send one at a time through it's going to work both ways the reason why i didn't do this in the first place is because i was sending hundreds of stacks through at the same time and it would basically fill up all of these hopper minecarts and then the rest of it would sit up there and despawn so that's why we have all of these hopper minecarts that way we could send it across the ice stream it's going to fill up all of those hopper minecarts and then it's going to constantly sling it back and forth over those hopper minecarts until all of the gold is absorbed one of the bigger issues that i dealt with was actually on a live stream as well and that was figuring out what was wrong with this farm here if you remember a while ago i ended up building this fortress farm and as you can see that uh that lovely minecraft bedrock bug has struck again and all of the tridents have fallen through and basically killed all of our minecarts and since i left this on they probably got dispensed into the lava that's wonderful so we'll have to fix that again however i ended up fixing the bigger issue with this you see as bad as that sucks i could just grab those tridents put another hopper minecart down and then rethrow the tridents and that is fixed however the issue that i was running into before was we would have blaze spawn in here and for whatever reason oh boy as i was saying for whatever reason the blaze would sit there and basically look at us even though we were way up there inside of our afk location and we could not get far enough away because we were at the maximum despawn distance so if i went one block higher all of the blazes would then despawn however for whatever reason they were locked on us even though there are solid blocks between us and the blaze they were still able to pathfind to us 
and that would essentially make it to where the blazes would never go down because they were constantly trying to fly up to get to us now the reason why that's relevant is because it broke the farm you see all the other mobs would eventually die off because they were doing what they were supposed to however the blazes they would constantly try to fly up and then more blazes would spawn eventually filling up the mob cap so there would be nothing but blazes and basically when that happened all we were left with is a bunch of hovering blazes trying to get to the player and nothing else could spawn because the mob cap was all the way filled up kind of a tough problem to fix however i was able to fix it and it wasn't the easiest and the reason why it wasn't the easiest is because I had to move the AFK location. You see, I know that the blaze are going to basically pathfind to me regardless where my AFK location is, as long as I'm not too far away to where they despawn. So the logical answer was to just move it downwards. That way the blaze would actually go down like they're supposed to, instead of trying to fly up to me. You see, if they go down, at least they can go down and get into the trident killer and die, instead of just sitting there idling, tying up the mob cap. And the reason why it is a big deal to move the AFK location is, well, you have to spawn proof the entire sphere that you are in. So all of this down here was not spawn proof before, along with all the stuff inside of this nether fortress, and even a bunch of the other stuff down below. All of this had to be covered up with half slabs, that way we did not have any spawns occurring down here. So now our AFK location is down below. And it's a little bit more of a pain to get to from this area. However, because we have this ongoing trident bug, I would like to come up here and check the tridents anyways, instead of just running power up to here. If we didn't have this bug to deal with, then I would just run power up to here. But we're not playing Minecraft Java. We are playing Minecraft Bedrock and Minecraft Bedrock has lots of bugs. So pretty much any time that I want to use this farm, I have to run up here, throw on the lever. If the tridents are all dropped down, then I need to correct that issue. And uh, once the power is on, then I can only then come all the way down here. And then I have like a little cutout to where I could go through the wall here. And this is going to take me to the AFK location, which is right up here at the top of the scaffolding. Nothing fancy to see here, just a little box to AFK at. And if we put ourselves into free cam, is that a zombified piglin wearing another skeleton skull? <laughs> Alrighty, apparently he's watching me. Kind of creepy. But anyways, as you can see, if we go all the way up here in free cam mode, you can see all of this area is loaded. And if the tridents were not inside of the bottom of the trident killer, then we could turn this on and actually have this work in the way that it's supposed to. And that is essentially how I got all of the blaze rods, which the blaze rods were much needed because I needed blaze powder to make other components as well. Now the witch farm supplied a bunch of other materials such as redstone dust and things like that. However, another one of the larger projects was over here at Slucifer. If we fly over here, I did quite a bit of work under here trying to get this to where it would reliably produce skulk. I ended up going through a couple different designs. Well, it wasn't really the skulk that I needed, more so the skulk sensor. So if we go down the ladder, you can see that it does look a little bit different here, and that is because we have a skulk farm. This cart is basically one that you would use to ride back and forth. And if we turn this on here, my, my little makeshift lever here, you'll see that the golden rail starts pulsing back and forth. And if we give that a little nudge, that's just going to continue to carry us back and forth at a pretty slow speed. That way we could just grab our hoe and hold down the mine button and mine all of the skulk sensor and the skulk shriekers. The other side is pretty straightforward. You just throw this lever on. It's going to send all of those hopper mine carts back and forth, collecting everything that drops down on this platform here. And then you could collect it all from here. As you can see, well, I picked up everything other than the rotten flesh and I'm eventually going to need to add a rotten flesh filter to this. That way it can actually keep it clean. Now the next episode was going to be a huge project being undertook over here. And that's going to be basically making a pathway to connect all of this. And I finally wanted to finish all of this over here inside of the Guardian Farm as well. However, that's been put on the back burner due to this block here in my inventory. You see, the next episode, I might do a little bit more catching up with the stuff that I missed on this one. However, the primary part of the episode is going to be adding crafters to all of these farms. That way they can be as efficient as possible in making whatever we need them to which should be a load of fun, and hopefully we'll learn a lot together. Yeah, I love it when there's new stuff added to the game. The crafter makes me think of the chest boat whenever it came into the game. When I crafted that one there, 
and haven't touched it since don't worry we're going to do so much more with the crafter i promise the other material that we needed was copper which was great because i already had a farm set up to actually get the copper from it however due to mojang making some changes to the mob heads they no longer stack to 64 like they used to and they would take up a whole bunch of inventory space and it's bad enough dealing with that with all of the rotten flesh and then all the other tridents fishing poles swords and stuff that you don't need so I essentially just made a sorting system over here on the drowned farm. So everything gets killed inside of the drowned farm there. And then we are sorting out all of our copper over here. More copper here. And then we are sorting out the ink sacks here and here. And then on this one, we're sorting out Nautilus shells. And on the last one, we just have an overflow that way. If for whatever reason, we do want to capture tridents or drowned heads or whatever else comes out of this farm. But the way it's set up is whenever this thing is slapped full like it is now then the rest of it just goes into this dropper which then basically spits it into lava and then of course if i ever don't want to keep any of this stuff i could just come over here and throw this lever on here which is going to lock this hopper and keep the system from collecting any of this garbage and i tell you what i really need people to start buying these tridents because well i just have way too many of them i got tridents everywhere I mean, it's great because this bug constantly deletes all the tridents. It still doesn't allow us to keep up with the amount of tridents that I'm getting from this farm. And uh, I might just have to start selling boxes of tridents and making a mini game to throw them at each other. I don't know. Too many tridents though. So as you can see, there has been a whole lot going on on the server. Well, maybe. Time lapses can be a little bit funny because, well, it's just a couple minutes of footage that you're watching. However, it's multiple hours on the content creator side. Even though that time lapse wasn't the longest, I think before starting that has probably been about 40 to 50 hours of actual grind time getting to where I'm at now. That includes fixing all of the farms, gathering materials, and all the other stuff. Pretty crazy, huh? With that being said, if you appreciate the effort and you enjoyed the episode, please consider subscribing. We are just about to roll over to 1,600 subscribers, and it's been another wonderful milestone for my channel. I do greatly appreciate all of you guys, and I greatly appreciate all of the support that I get. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!